all right welcome back to another video of the target individual program target individual experience so i'm leaving i'm not staying it's better than i uh you know when the, when they start talking like this and particularly using her in the manner in which they're using her the best thing is to leave right and uh you know because I know in the morning she is going to oversleep and then have me uh, as I just as I walk past I hear t -t -t -t. and again on the surveillance stared at the surveillance camera that's in there so they they know look all black you know what back again using the color black see tell you guys you never uh you never cease to <laughs> uh, amaze me and how quick they are in terms of getting uh, a prop real time like i just made the decision to leave because i said you know what it's better if i just leave because in the morning like i said she's not getting up and if I stay this year, expect me to get up, do everything, take my daughter to where she needs to go to, to go on her trip. And, you know, that's not going to happen. And what that's going to lead to is an argument. Now, here is the white girl. Again, understand the pattern. Understand the patterns, right? Understand the pattern. You see her pinching her nose? All right, understand the pattern okay so like i said it's best for me to leave and even you find yourself getting upset or even angry because of their targeting you and using her to do it just for me to just leave all right because uh, they love to play this theme of always being used being used as if i've used women to the degree in which they're getting them getting her to use me okay and again these are in my early 20s you know uh having a getting in relationship and not taking it seriously because that's how we're conditioned as young men but as you get older you see and they know exactly when to attack you when you're young they know exactly when to attack you when i when they know that you're waking up when they know that you're you you are changing they don't want you to change all right oh, i need to get some uh, change for the bus. they don't want you to change right because you see that's the that's the conditioning the negative conditioning so once they see you as a black person and you're young and you're you you, you start to be concerned not just about yourself but about you, you know uh, your people in general that's when they that's when they start attacking you that's when they will seek out to destroy you know your awakened uh state or your, on your way to enlightenment okay yeah you start to get changed for the bus so as i was saying when they see that you have be, you're, you are starting to change in terms of you know your thought patterns your behavior they don't want you to change it's, it is a program state that they want you to constantly remain in this is why you see you know particularly within our women even at the age of 45 50 55 they behave and act like children like like i shouldn't say children but as if they were in their early 20s you know okay why is she leaving <laughs> so look why is she leaving again perp i guess you know whatever it is didn't work so she's leaving they give her a signal it must have been the signal the car honking for her to leave and look at the dude over there. Oh, that's why. This dude over there in the car. He opened up the back door and closed it. There's nobody in there. So, there must have been, again, 
See how they position their props? See how they position them? Like I said, I know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, like I said, you see most of our women today. You know? Uh, uh, you know, have the mindset of young women in their 20s. You know, after they have, again, uh, gone through life, uh, not really taking life seriously, okay? Having multiple baby daddies, right? Instead of saying, you know what, let me get on uh, 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 contraception, let me ask him to wear a condom. A lot of times they'll, they will say, they won't say nothing. They'll leave it up to the men. And, you know, most, we have, most men are conditioned, whether they're black, white, what have you. You know, then they're not conditioned, and particularly black people, particularly black men, are not conditioned to use uh, contraception, right? As well as our women. All right? And when they chase after men who they see have potential then you know that in itself takes over their mind they don't listen to what men has to say right and that's why i said it's important for me raising a daughter and a son to teach them certain things particularly my daughter you know particularly teaching her to uh, have respect for men to value men okay to listen to a man if a man says hey i don't want to have a child uh, and make sure whoever you're dealing with or whoever of a man tell you that you don't have sex without uh, using protection okay and on top of that you make sure that well she is going to be on, on contraception that's one thing that I will uh, make sure that she's on okay and so and for my son I tell him I said listen you know as I told my older son Abstain from sex until, you know, you, uh, uh, in, you know, in a relationship, uh, don't try to live your 20s partying and having fun, you know, spend your 20s uh, um, working, saving, right? Because I tell them, I said, you know, most women, young women, by the time they, as they get older, by the time they be 35, 40, they start to think different. For the most part, meaning that now they want a man to take care of them, whereas they spend their 20s, mid 30s being independent, right? Living a, a delusional fantasy life. I said, You find make sure when you, know, you, you date that you date with a purpose, and that purpose is for marriage, right? That's what I tell them. And they don't like that. Every time I say that, they'll always use the police sirens because that is not how they want us to to be how to think like that they want us to be how they condition us to be right and we must understand that particularly uh, as a black person not as a ti now you know <laughs> as a black person but also as a ti it's the same thing but it's meant to uh the way there's a different sort of targeting right it's non-consensual human experimentation illegal microchipping for the purpose of neural monitoring right and to put you in certain positions right if you allow them to you know if you're silent you allow them to um control you you know it's to live a comfortable life right to be a gatekeeper you know but for me no no thank you like i said i, I don't have that i've never had the mentality of that um measle, as dr uma johnson would say even when i was younger even when I was younger, whether I was in college, whether I was working, I always look out for others, whether they're black, white, what have you, and I always tell them the truth, right? I always, if I have to, if, when they hire a new person, whether they're black, they're white, I train them without any fear of me losing my job because like I, I know I'm a, as a black person, we're the last hired first five. So I don't, I don't, I don't try to, to do things to protect my job because I know my it, it, it's not guaranteed and I know how important it, you know here's the fortunate thing though like I said I had white all the white men who were telling me the truth so like I said so when I talk about white racism like I said I know there are good white people out there but it's just too few of them 
right? There is just too few of them. And I was fortunate to meet a few that told me the truth. You know, but of course they're, they were not born in the United States. They were born out of the United States, so that's why. All right? The mindset is different, particularly when they grew up, uh, when they, you know, one came over, he was very young, living in the black community. The other guy, uh, Polish, you know, um, very artistic, brilliant photographer, taught me a lot about photography and retouching. And also Asian, Asian men, all the Asian men. So, you know, I was, like I said, I was fortunate. So this is why I never had that concept of meism. You know, even when I was young, I never used the N-word. Right? All my friends used the N-word around me. I didn't use it. I really, if I did, I, I can't even remember. That's tell you how few, maybe a few times I, I use it. So I never had that belief system that, um, you know, that as black people, because we come from different uh, 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 um, culture, right, per se, or from a different country, that we're, we're, we're extremely different. The only difference is that we were just born someplace else. And I always tell people, you know, when the slave ship came to the West, right, they didn't care who, they didn't keep families together. They dropped some of your families off in the West Indies. They may have dropped some in South America and then dropped some off in, off, uh, in America. So I never saw us as a people, black people, as not being uh, one family. And this is how we have to think. See, the white races have conditioned in our mind that we are all separate, right? They have, they, they, they have put their whiteness at the top and we have put our blackness at the bottom. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with us doing what we need to do for us as a people. Just as everybody else do what they need to do for them as a people. So don't fall into the guilt trip. Don't fall into the guilt trip because you love yourself, you love your people. It doesn't matter what color you are, right? But for me as a black person, they try to run this guilt trip because I care about black people. All right? I was listening to Malcolm X uh, today, uh, actually tonight, earlier. And it's, like I said, you know, now they start back where I'm listening to Malcolm X. Every time Malcolm X's name is mentioned, they start using the police sirens. Right? And so it was an interview he was doing with another, not a, a debate, with another black uh, intellect. And uh, as the, uh, the, what do you call, the, the person who was uh, mediating, the mediator, uh, just as he was about to call Malcolm X, he had the police sirens. Right? So again, they will always use these opportunities so when they think that they have me down and out to really show what they're really about. And this is why I try to tell, you know, people, particularly black people, who engage in this, and nigger who engage in, the, well, not black people, nigger who engage in this sort of behavior. They will always wait till they think that they have me down and out. When they think that they convince uh, the, you know, the black people in my community, the nigger people in my community, to uh, attack me in the way they have, they have attacked me. They will always wait on those moments to really show themselves for who they really are, right? So, that's why. So I'm gonna get home, I gotta come back here tomorrow. Um, but at least, like I said, her, she said that her dinner was canceled. So, um, you know, hopefully she'll get up to get my daughter uh, to her trip. If not, uh, you know, I'll come over, I'll spend the day with them until she uh, comes home. All right, so anyhow, and you can see, you can see all black, everybody's wearing black. Look, look, all black. <laughs> all right, they're walking up and down here, again, wearing all black, all right? And also the red theme, you'll see the red theme as I turn, you'll see the red theme. All right? Across the street. <laughs> Look. All black. We got on a bicycle. Here it is. Alright. So yeah. Across the street again. 
you know, come over here. Look, look. So, so, so why are they, why are they all on the bicycle? Now, why the hell this little kid is out here this time of night? <laughs> all right, look, all black. Okay. So, so again, and this is what happened in our community. So they they'll try to guilt trip me by having this little kid this is that was a little kid on a bike no older than probably 10 years old okay it is after 12 o'clock at night and he's out here riding a scooter in the street so that's how they try to do the guilt trip right <laughs> she, she, she goes all black wearing all black <laughs> okay i'm just showing you guys a pattern an example of what it is that they do Right, so again, the little kid trying to go trip me. And first of all, like I said, I've never abandoned my kids, even my oldest, I never abandoned him. And despite what his mother put me through, the lies, the deception, right? And, you know, using the system to try to destroy my life, right? And seeing this is what black women have learned a lot, not black women, but Nicoprian have, have learned, is to use the system in order to exert punishment on on the men that they've done wrong to because they don't want to be hold, held accountable or they don't want to face the facts and the truth and they don't want to come to you as a man to tell the truth so they will you see men don't do this right uh black men don't 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 do this we don't use the system the way negro pain women use the system against us right and this is how they're conditioned so you have to understand that so what we have, like I said, the men, in the men, black men, particularly in the community, have to stand up and take charge. Because the, what the white races have done is empower a woman to act against us. Okay? They don't empower white women to act against white men. I understand that. Okay? And white women know that their power lies within their men. Okay, this is why, like I said, when, the, when push comes to shove, white women, whether they're conservative or liberal, will always vote for the white supremacist. Then they, they know that's going to keep and uphold their privilege. All right? You got to understand that. Anyhow, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.